Hi guys, so uh, welcome to another um, Chaffle Clinic TV. Um, so we're really lucky today. I have been joined by a good friend of mine, uh, Martin. Um, Martin is um, the golf pro down at Wexham, uh, Wexham Park Golf Club, uh, which is about oh, five miles. Yeah, it's not far. Yeah, not far not at all. Just down. Um, so we're going to be talking about everything to do with sort of how we know each other, what Martin does on a daily basis, how what he does is important, and uh, how sort of the, how we work together. Um, can be utilised as well. Um, we've got a few clubs knocking around. We've got a few bits and pieces a bit about sort of biomechanics and um, posture, especially, which we'll go through at the end. And um, Lewis is going to be on hand to uh, feed back any questions that, uh, that you might have throughout the um, throughout the throughout the show. Um, so let me introduce Martin. So Martin is a good friend of mine. Tell me all about it, Martin. What's the how did you get into this? How did you get into golf? Well, I've been playing golf all my life, um, since I was four, so far too many years ago now, I'm pushing towards the seniors tour, so um, I've been a pro for 30 years, um, so my passion is coaching, and when you didn't kind of make it as a player yourself, then you think, well, what's the next best thing? Yeah. Answer, pass on your knowledge, so, you know, I've taught, and obviously most people know me from Wexford Park, because I've been there off and on for 30 years and great place um, thriving again it's changed yeah. a lot as yeah well. no 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 we've got um, new owners in town have done a fantastic job yeah. in terms of um, giving the place a bit of love and put some investment and there's more to come so you know we've been really really busy which is great and um, as I say I'm coaching um, there full time and we're working with anyone really from this size to this size and whatever ability because the game has changed enormously in that time in the old days it used to be how good can I be yeah. but um, golf's a time poor game so now it's how much fun can I have from golf yeah. and um, you know I've certainly had to embrace that as a coach and um, you know it's about making the game simple um, making sure people understand how to utilise information 100% and, you know people like your good self play a key role in that because people try and learn from social media you know YouTube, etc., etc., and yeah. they might be doing completely the wrong things and end up in poor posture or poor movements or whatever, and worse still, hurt themselves. Yeah. Are we just talking off camera about you know how people get into golf through family, relatives, friends, and they'll take advice or something from a driving range perspective and then try and implement it for two years before coming to see you for their first very lesson. Absolutely. And then they're broken. You've Absolutely. kind of got to take them back to basics. That, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to unpick. You know the problems because you can't build a house and uh, hire a golf swing without good foundations, and good foundations are in your setup position. Um, you know you're, you're aiming the club, you're holding the club, your posture. That's yeah. the key thing. They're the sort of fundamentals. Once you have those right, then you've got half a chance. Yeah. So, so at what point did? Because I don't think I know this story actually. At what point did you decide I'm not going to make it as a top professional, and I'm going to go to coaching? Yeah, that was a, a difficult one. I think. Um, I, golf was my passion and in those days we didn't understand the pathway as to what was required um, my dad was sort of pushed me to play with the top player the top pro at Wentworth Bernard Gallagher yeah. and he said oh, I'll take him out there tell him how good he really is and it sort of deflated me a little bit I should have been different and said right I'll show you that um, and I left school I was at RGS up the road and um, I went into the bank I had six months in the bank and hated it it was my mum who turned around and said do you know what? Follow your passion. Yeah. You love golf, go for it. So I went to Wexham and David Morgan was my first boss and he said, look, do you want to play golf? I said, well, I'd love to play golf. He said, well, you can't have a job here. I said, okay. He said, do you want to earn some money? I said, yep. And I said, that's be nice. And uh, he said, well, I will show you the business side of golf. And yeah. Obviously in those days, Wexham was just absolutely thriving. It was a boom time for golf, the late um, 80s, early 90s. And I used to work in shop, and I used to coach. So I used to sell equipment, and I coach. And thirty years later, I'm still doing still the same doing. thing. Is it, it must do. I mean, much like sort of you know, with back pain clinics and all the rest of it, and especially the fitness industry, it goes through peaks and troughs. It must do completely. Yeah, you know, completely. And the game has, uh, as I say, it's changed because time, social media, yeah. internet, um, distractions, and let's be honest about it. Golf is the most difficult game you'll ever play. Yeah. You know, and people don't understand the application, or as you say, they don't understand the right process on every side, not just your golf, but your health, yeah. your fitness, um, how important it actually is to get yourself to achieve your potential. Well, my 
funny enough, my, my partner um, always asks me, so where I'm a member at the minute at Wickham, my partner always says to me, do you not, do you not get bored of playing the same course every, you know, I play once, twice a week, or at least try to, um, do you not get bored of playing the same course every time? And it's difficult from a non-golfer's perspective to understand that it's, it's not boring because every shot you play is completely different to the shot that you've ever played before. Totally. For, to, you know, based on the ground, the club choice, the wind, the, you know, the, every condition you can possibly think of changes how you approach certain shots. Oh, certainly in this country, because we get the four seasons. Well, exactly, 100%. <laughs> I mean, you start playing down at courses like, you know, in the Oxfordshire, it's like playing it's like playing an inland Real links gun. course. It's not, That's it, right. it's, it's different, it's a different ball game. I think it's quite interesting to take the, the principles of golf and everything you can learn on a driving range on a putting green, put them on the real course, and you can crumble within the space of 30 seconds. Absolutely. And it's, I think it's so much in your head. I mean, the psychological aspect, oh. I mean, we're going to talk an awful lot about the biomechanical side and how, you know, how your body adapts to certain, you know, certain swing types and positions and the rest of it. But a psychological perspective as well, that comes into play must do massively. Oh, huge. It's, it, it's a part of the, you know, my coaching that I really do enjoy because my biggest reason why I still do it my passion is because I like people yeah. and I like to help people like you do you know you, you're you're not here to sort of do anything other than get people better 100% and I think that hopefully comes across in what I do and the most important is they enjoy it and that way they come back yeah. and it's about building a relationship with a person and understanding what meets their goal Yeah. and everyone's goal in golf has changed now it used to be in the old days how good can I be Yeah. now it's right you know can I improve my score or I haven't got much time but can I can I just achieve a little goal? Yeah. Or am I getting my exercise? Is it good for my lifestyle? Is it helping me to keep moving? Am I spending time with my kids? What a, you know, golf has just changed immeasurably, and um, you know, one of the biggest markets um, is the Top Golf. Yeah, that's and you, you go to Top Golf and you see these people trying to whack a ball, and I just wish I could just go and have my business card out and say I can help you with that. Yeah, absolutely. I remember because the video of the guy trying to hit a ball and he topples off the edge yeah. into the netting <laughs> on the bottom. <laughs> You know, there's, there's loads of videos like that that are on, on YouTube and everything that um, there are other outlets available other than YouTube. Um, but the videos of them just, and there's the, uh, the one um, from the recent uh, recent tour uh, where the guys, I can't remember who played it actually, but he's played a shot off, off a bank where he's so, the ball was so high above his feet and as he struck the ball, he's actually come through and landed in a lunge position because the momentum of his swing actually took him through that he couldn't place his foot adequately enough. He had to, you, right? He had to modify what he was doing. That's the, that's the beauty of the game too. Is the fact, I mean, you know, I get great joy out of helping people um, disabled, and you know, and all sorts of different things like that. It's just the game should be fun. Yeah. You know, that's what it should always be. It's it's the it's the greatest game you'll ever play. The most rewarding, the most challenging, the most frustrating. It's got all the extremes, and it's a complete game of total opposite. Yeah. But um, when, when you see some of these less able people get pleasure out of golf it's, it's brilliant yeah absolutely, absolutely. And we've got a lovely guy um, at our place he's got one leg and he goes out there and he I gave him a lesson and it was just fascinating working with him and how much of what you go through in your head in terms of what you would apply to um, to a fully able person how would you modify how do you modify that to take someone who is partially disabled that you've then got to think right this person needs a completely different outlook on terms of what we do well I think you've got to work with them so you take Des for example, Des um, lost his leg in a motorcycle accident yeah. and um, came for a lesson and we still worked on the same principle of um, grip yeah. but obviously because he's got one leg he can't shift his body as quickly or as effectively so what I really focused on during the session was balance yeah. and try to understand what he could move from his core um, and try to get him to see what he could do and what he couldn't do. and. Um, we had a lot of fun, and it's it's great fun working with him, um, because his range of movement we changed, and that's obviously how we got together as yeah. well. Is the fact that when people can't move, and they develop some sort of pain or they can't get there, that's when I come in and I say, well, hang on a minute, you might need to go and see Doctor Ben. I said because <laughs> less than the Doctor Ben. No, well, you <laughs> like Doctor Ben. They like all that stuff. They need to know you're qualified. <laughs> but we call you Ben, um, but. Working with Des was just great fun. We, we had an hour and then I do believe he went out and he got his handicap, which for him was just like climbing a mountain. Yeah, and brilliant. There he is out there, he's out there most days, he plays with Colin the Ranger and off they go. Brilliant. 
That's brilliant. How much time do you get out now? A week? I, I don't. Not at all? <laughs> I wish. I play when I can. Yeah. I still love it. I, I, love, I love playing with my son. I was going to say your boys should stuff, man. Yeah, no, I mean, it's great. I, I, I feel awful because I wish I could spend more time playing with him. And my older son's in the county programme, with which I'm the under-12 coach. Okay. And he's doing really well. And um, my younger son is just a different species, and he just loves it. Yeah. And he just will pick it up and put it down when he wants to. But that's the, the total contrast of what their goals are. But um, interestingly enough, with Matthew, my older son, um, he's at that point now. He's 11, and we were at the uh, county parents' evening last night, uh, last week. And it was really interesting how elite golf is now fueled by data and about speed and about by you know how much they can move the club and how flexible their bodies are yeah. and the elite performance coaches were great because they said there's a real duty of care yeah. with these young kids that they manage their you know what they can and can't do physically and, and Matthew um, interesting case he was he was a colic baby and um, he didn't eat much and he, I don't know whether you could confirm this but he's sort of he's very stiff okay and um, be quite interesting because I know you do a lot now in this fantastic place you've got here with kids. It might yeah. be interesting to use him as maybe a case study because I'm trying to just, he's got good posture, but I'm just trying to get him to shift his body through the ball a little bit more effectively rather than trying to sort of spin out of the yeah. shot like a lot of kids do when they're just trying to generate power. Yeah. So I think it's understanding where power comes from and you need to have your engine, your body in the best shape possible to do it. Yeah. So uh, it's it's great watching the, the kids and the kids keep me young. I, that's why, you know, working at that level, I'm almost like a talent spotter for watching some of these kids grow. And uh, you know, we've had some success in the past, which has always been good. Well, imagine there's, there's there's so many of them coming through now, and that's obviously a testament to a what's going on with the with the tour at the minute in terms of the professionals coming through. Um, but b I think that you know, just the. The sheer volume of people going to Top Golf and having a day out there, and I think the accessibility of driving ranges now is kind of making it a lot more interesting well, for people. Well, Wexham has kind of rebranded itself as to what it should be. It's a family golf centre. Yeah, and um, it's not perfect. Well, it's not it's, a professional. Why, why have I stayed there? Because you know it's moved with the times. Yeah, it's golf clubs can be sort of perceived as yeah. sort of no go zones in this. You know, you've got the certain clothes on or whatever so it is, and we've, that, we've experienced that oh, yeah. all over the place. I mean, uh, you know, I've I've played at one over over this old Berkshire where I won't mention any name courses, but I got told off because my socks were too low and they were the wrong colour, mm. and it was just, I mean, I'm sat there thinking, it's 2016. Mm. What on earth are we having this conversation <laughs> about socks and colour for? Mm. Um, but you know, that that stigma is is slowly shifting. It it is it is, and um, you know. I say we're geared up for it over at Wexham and the county came to us um, three three years ago and they set us up as um, a hub centre yeah. um, where we can bring in uh, junior golfers and just give them that opportunity and that exposure to get involved in our coaching programme and getting involved in the local county tournaments yeah. and the two go hand in gloves. So if you get a child quite young age and you can work with them then you can actually in still the importance of the basics yeah. and obviously get them to play properly but and get them to play without hurting themselves exactly. and um, you know we've had great success with that we've run the most successful hub centre in the Barks Bucks and Oxen area for the last three years and we're producing this s seam of talent that go on to bigger and better things and um, so on that note then on that note of sort of playing within themselves without pain and stuff let's, let's talk a little bit about pain and mm. sort of how, how you and I kind of sort of got together sounds a little bit more romantic than it actually <laughs> probably was but in terms of how we kind of got to know each other I mean Martin and I have played squash together for a couple of years when I first moved to the area and you always beat me 2011 wow it didn't start that way I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was a little bit of overlap but then I started I started playing golf my last year at university so I must have been sort of what 23 24 and then obviously when we started um, playing squash and I kind of learned and understood who you were um, it was kind of a good opportunity whilst I was sort of living the single life and you know not wanting to go home too much to a bed sit that I didn't really want to be at about coming down the driving range and having a few lessons and seeing potentially what I could do with a, with a golf club in hand and I think from there it definitely progressed to how you and I can kind of take clients that you have patients that I have to kind of modify 
and improve the, both their, their quality of life and their living based on sort of how much pain or discomfort they're in, but also how to create a much more efficient, beneficial um, round of golf for them based on you know, their biomechanics and things. Absolutely, and, and I learned so much from you because again, my coaching, as you know, is geared towards the person, and I need to understand what you can and can't do. So, from a biomechanical um, point of view, yeah. you were great in terms of yeah, I can do that, and I'm shifting this muscle, and I'm shifting that muscle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for me, it was like, oh, this is good for me too, because I'm actually learning more about you know what actually is the driving forces in the swing, yeah. and and if if those muscles are tight, um, then there's a problem, and you know. Obviously, in my own case, I, I love sport. I, I play golf, I play football, I play squash. Do you support? Don't mention it. <laughs> Everyone knows who I support. I'm a huge Southampton fan, born and bred. Very proud, but uh, we're struggling a little bit this year. We've to be fair, I can't, I can't talk very well. You're a villain. I'm, a, bit, I'm a villain fan, so <laughs> we don't have an awful lot of a leg to stand on with this. But well, we might see you next year, unfortunately, in the championship, unless you get <laughs> I think we're, we're heading on a one-way ticket at the moment. But, um, uh, it's when they turn around, but... That's another thing, but I think, you know, for me, playing all this different sport, typical, you know, we don't stretch properly because we're not shown. Um, again, it's just education. And when well, I certainly the last ten years, we've really kicked yeah. off about dynamic stretching before sport. And what was great is when, obviously, primarily through squash, I think the issue I had was was more up here where it kind of jammed. Yeah. And what I loved when I came to see you was the fact that rather than saying right, lie down there, I'm, I'm just do whatever you do you actually yeah. taught me through it yeah and again that was a learning curve for me in terms of the fact blimey he's going to tell me what he's going to do before he's going to do it yeah. so that from a, a trust point of view from a confidence point of view is is amazing yeah. and that's what made our working relationship stronger because I thought hang on a minute if I get somebody here who can't move how I want them to move because they physically can't able yeah they'll get one of your cards. Well, I think that was the most important thing. The most important thing was we both we both looked at patients and clients in the same way. We kind of saw the individual rather than the, than the textbook mm -hmm. and that was definitely the bit that kind of drew me more towards your coaching style. You know, I, I dislocated my finger from a very early age when I was playing you know, football um, and I really found it uncomfortable to interlink my fingers and no matter how many, I mean, I, I went to see a few people after you when I shifted clubs and stuff, Every single one of them was adamant that I needed to either interlock or I needed to modify my grip some way. Where actually the most comfortable grip position was for me to go hand on hand mm -hmm. or hand over hand, and it was just you were the only person that said actually if that was if that's what works for you, we can coach that. We can you know, I can coach around that. There's no there's no correct way of striking a golf club. I mean you see that with you know with Bryson on tour now. Mm -hmm. You see that with. Mm -hmm. Um, with Stenson, you know, Stenson's got the most, for me, one of the most stable, consistent swings all the way through the tour. But Bryson's completely different, and everyone's got a different way of setting that up. Well, I coach what I consider the amateur equivalent of Bryson DeChambeau. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's a fascinating lad. He really is. And uh, I've known him for eight years now. And um, he started, he was just that thin, turned up at 15. And uh, he said, I want to play on the tour. And I thought, right, what's your handicap? And he said, 11. I thought, wow, that's going to be a challenge. But I've never in my life worked with a more dedicated, hard-working kid than this kid. Really? And he's now 23. And along the journey, um, you know, he got fascinated by data. So I rung up my good friend um, we grew up with. Rob Watts, yep. who's one of the England coaches, and I said, look, you need to go and talk to Rob. And we set about a program where Rob, who knew a lot about you know, building the body correctly so you get the right movements, yep. um, did that with David. And um, he really recognised he was a quick learner. Okay. And then Rob's into the, the track man stuff and the data stuff, whereas I'm more about the person, so that's how we differentiate. But the, between the two of us, We've managed him, yep. and here he is, um, currently trying to seek out a Walker Cup place next year. He played in the Home Internationals in September and hold the winning putt for England. He made his England debut. Brilliant. And handicaps plus four or whatever it is. And um, I saw him last week, and he's in a really good space. And 
you know, you watch the growth in that person, and I think. Was this guy that was on your on yes, your Facebook? Yes, yeah. sorry, um, David Langley. If you want to check it out, I mean, he's he is Deshamba. It's as simple as that. He he just researches stuff. Yeah. And he he knows everything he needs to know, but he comes to someone like me to filtrate it because information is a wonderful thing. Yeah. But if it's not the correct information for you, it's useless. Do you feel now though that with with the track my stuff? I mean, the only reason I mention this is because. I played on on Sunday and I played with a guy who he, he, he went for a fitting and bear in mind he now plays off of 12 um, he can strike the ball very well he has a very nice drive but he was absolutely obsessed that the, the clubs that he'd, that he'd been fitted to now the clubs he currently has were off in some way or this was too and he wasn't generating that, you know, head speed and I mean not to say that the statistics aren't useful can they also become a little bit obsessive sometimes. Oh, completely. Good grief. Completely. Because you can't take the little orange box with you on the golf course. 100%. <laughs> so, I wish you could. I mean, you know, for me, I, I grew up, a, I was a Seve disciple. So you watch Seve by a steerage, you go out in the garden, you try and be like Seve. Yep. It was just amazing. And you muck it up more times. Now, kids have got the reference to that or people have got the reference to that. And they can become stalled with information. Yep. Um, and... You know, it's it's a management thing. I think it's got a great place in it. Yeah. And certainly, when you look at elite level and what's going on out on the tours now, the the the, the guys and the girls are becoming longer, stronger. So they need, as many of them allude to, they need the right swing coach, they need the right mental coach, they need the right um, biomechanical coach, yeah. they need the correct physio, they need the right chiropractor, they need a whole team. Yeah. Because when Tiger came along, he was the first golf athlete. You know, he was the guy that changed the game from being this recreational game where you go and have a few beers and yeah. talk about how you played and, you know, went off into the night, etc., etc. to, no, that's it. It's that's like, not, this is a, I mean, he's revolutionised it. It's not, not being around the bush, he was, he was obsessed with it. Ah, totally. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that's what you have to be if you want to get out there. And that's where the game's been lost a little bit, I think, because, you know, people suddenly aspire to be like, the Tiger Woods is in this world and they haven't got the time or the skill level or whatever it might be to do it so I'm always about trying to bring it back and say right what's your goal it might be just to walk around the golf course yeah you know it might be just to play better it might be to do anything um so yeah I'm privileged enough to work having worked at elite level but most of my stuff is with new golfers or kids or beginners or just people wanting to experience it yeah so so why now is the so when I go to the golf club there's there's so many people that if I just walk in now most of the people at the club know who I am know what I do for a living the amount of people that will turn around to me and say well I've got a bad back I've got this I've got that <laughs> and I'm sort of thinking okay you're still playing golf fantastic but they're not enjoying the experience of playing golf anymore um, because it's uncomfortable or painful but they're still coming back with ridiculously good scores they're still coming back with scores that are better than the handicap. Why do you think that is? I've got a theory. Why do you think that's interesting? That's a, that's a great question, actually. It's, it's hard to really put one little thing on it. I think if you, you know, you get you, you see some swings. I mean, you have to go on YouTube to see some of those swings that people produce. And do you see um, Niles Barkley? His golf swing. No. There's a video on YouTube. You need to see his golf swing. He's kind of got so. Niles Barkley is obviously a famous basketball player. He's got a swing where he comes up and he comes down and he gets to about five feet within the ball and pauses for a good two seconds, two, three seconds. And then <laughs> it's lift off and it's just, it's hilarious. I don't know if it was a spoof. I don't know if he was no. doing it for a giggle, but no. it was just hilarious to watch. Anyway, sorry, Cameron. No, it's, I mean, you know, you, you see, you find a way. I think that's part of the, the joy of the game as well. I mean, you know, good grief, my dad used to play golf like this. I mean, he, he was totally like he's self-taught. We were on the camera here, and this was my dad. You know, he's had a massively sort of strong grip around him like this. Yeah. And his back, you can, well, you can tell everyone about his back, because he's sort of like uh, like this, and, oh, you know, I've got back, back. And then when he gave up smoking, he put on weight, bless him. And But he used to play four or five days a week and got down as low as seven. Yeah, well. So, you know, it, he used to hit this great big flat hook he putt from 100 yards off the green because he couldn't chip but he yeah. managed to get away around and good on him for that God bless him up there but uh, 
you know, that's a sort of an example of what you see. Whereas if you get someone who's a little bit more textbook, um, or you get a chance to actually influence them, yeah. and you know, you can work on the posture. So I mean, if you want a simple little rhyme, guys, about golf posture, and get the critique over here of how to do it. With a little simple rhyme, you just sort of stand up nice and tall, feel that your back is quite straight, and then just stand nice and comfortable. Just tip forward from the spine, and flex, and just hang. I think uh, Lee Westwood refers to that. He's still very strong, old Lee. About hanging, so you feel comfortable, and then your your body in the posture position for golf should feel quite ready for action. And certainly, when I first came to see Ben, one of my issues was that I used to sort of get quite round shouldered. And what Ben did for me was to really sort of open up my the back of my the shoulders. Mid, the mid part of your back was just so solid and mm. so stiff. I mean, we can attribute that down to years of golf, yeah. years of squash, whatever you want to call it, but the actual mid part of your back was just getting to a point where it was just so stiff and uncomfortable. You had very little movement and flexibility through that mid part. A absolutely. And you, you know, it's just general wear and tear and, and ignorance. And what's happened since, because I'm pleased to tell you that I haven't seen him for quite some time, is I haven't needed to. We've been in the clinic for 18 months. He hasn't been. This is <laughs> the first time he's been here. I have to put the sat nav on to come over here. But what Ben did do is he released my, is the thoracic, is that yeah, right? Is that the, what thoracic, it's yeah. the thoracic area. So my range of movement is quite simple. And even when I do go and play, I had a great time in Portugal yeah. this summer. Um, and I put two rounds of golf together for the first time in a long, long, long time. And the stupidity of it and the crazy part about it is I felt my swing was much, much slower. And one of the things I was able to do, we talk about posture, and here, was as I moved, I was making that movement okay, but my bad shot is always when I come out of that. Now you can tell the push guys, and drive up and you through. can probably tell the guys that's something to do with my lack of movement here. Yeah. So again, what I was working on was just trying to sort of get into this position and much better movements through the ball is when you wait for the sh shot yeah. and you feel like the club is pointing at the ball when you come through before you end up facing the target. And that worked wonders for me. And using the mobility through the lower part of the back as mm -hmm. well. I mean, so many people, I mean, I think, I, I'm, coming back to that question I asked you, I mean, my theory is, is purely based on the fact that people generally will use as much mobility or as much movement as they have available to them at that point in time. Mm. Yeah. So, for instance, my swing is how many times have you told me my driver is? I can see as I'm on a backswing, yep. I can see the driver coming over my shoulder <laughs> on a backswing because I have that mobility and mm. range of motion. However, because I'm coming that far over, I'm also either rotating through my wrists, through my hands, and as I'm coming down, I've got so much more to correct before I get back down to that That's ball. Right. Whereas those people that I was talking about, the ones that actually come back in off a round of golf and are scoring crazy scores, but actually are in a lot of discomfort all the way through the round, are playing so neat and tidy and within their range of motion or a compact range of motion. All they're doing technically is playing within a range of motion that's pain not painful. Absolutely. So just a loose theory of mine, but they're just hitting it straight, accurate, without having any elaborate slice, without having any, any elaborate hook, because they're taking that that extreme range of motion out, that, that range of motion that realistically, if you're gonna have an elaborate big swing, you need to have a perfect elaborate big swing to be able to nail the type of shot you're after. Uh, absolutely, I mean, on that, you know, we've all heard of John Daly, I mean, he was probably the most famous example of that sort yeah. of position. And it was all like, he was, you know, Long John Daly, boom or bust, it would either be brilliant or all over the place. Yeah. Because exactly as you say, there's a lot of things that can go on. But I think one of the greatest things, you know, one of my success stories as a coach is working with the ladies. And um, I've had a couple of girls that I've taught in, in the past that have won actually out on tour. And I encourage a lot of the guys in particular to um, look at ladies golf. Because what you can learn from ladies golf played at proper level is exactly that. Yeah. Ladies are much better at listening than we are, and they sort of take instruction far better than we do, but it's that smoothness, it's that effortlessness, yep. and I think that also helps to prevent hurting yourself yep, as well. Um, you know, because you can do yourself a lot of damage with golf, yep. and um, I think 
my advice to anybody that wants to play successfully, then you know, by all means come down and see me and we can start you off on the right foot with the right basics and build your game up. If you get any aches and pains along the way, we'll pop and see Ben and Absolutely. he'll sort, sort you out. But I think that you know, a little investment in something of the right equipment, and this is um, what we use as a template. You, most people, I'm sure, have heard of ping golf equipment. And they fit clubs to your size. And I think that's so important. I see so many people with the wrong equipment at their disposal. Well, my clubs are six years old, yeah. and they were a bargain basement buy from um, from a, a very well-known sort of uh, golfing shop in the country. And well, what are you doing on Monday? <sighs> well, it sounds a bit come to see you. No, you can come down on Monday, because what we do do at Wexham is we have regular demo days. And on Monday, you can come and see the Titleist guys. Titleist are in? Yep, yeah, we have Titleist, we have Yonix, we have Ping, um, Cobra come along and periodically they come along and what they actually do is they will help to fit you with the right club and that's yeah. where you, the science is amazing yeah. you know the, the track man that we've discussed and the data that we discussed but I mean just to sort of for everyone out there I mean we have this little thing here a little measuring stick for our little friends when they start off at certain heights and uh, little colour coordinated clubs for youngsters so it's that time of year mums and dads you might want to uh, it's Christmas time, isn't it? in, oh. invest in a little set yeah. and as I say we do loads of work with with youngsters at Wexham um, I say it's what keeps me really doing the job you see that them having a little fun um, with playing golf and these special clubs you can feel the weight of those yeah. they're just really light they are they're just so effortless I mean you watch them play and mm. they make it look effortless mm. I mean they really do with, in terms of technique if you get taught from a young age they really do put us to shame absolutely and then you have, this is, for example, for me, this is a standard grip there, and you probably, as we were discussing, have a look at my posture. Um, I'm able to move more effectively because I've got the right club in my hand. And then the other extreme, I had a chap this year, quite funny, I brought this along just to show you how different it is. So this is a seven iron, by the way. This is a seven iron, <laughs> it's nearly as big as me, because this, the guy I was working with, he turned up for a golf lesson, he said, can I play golf? And I went, good grief. I said, how tall are you? And he went, seven feet. So this is the club we had to build for him. So, you know, he would, he turned up with a wrong club, and he was like that. And then you would be making having a field out of him. And he's got a longer bench. But uh, <laughs> he, he's he's now able to actually hit balls using something like this. So it's, it's really, really key, um, you know, getting the right sort of equipment at your disposal, and then more importantly, being able to use it. There's so many choices now with the equipment, though. Yeah, there's too much choice. Really? Yeah, I think, um, again, I think people get associated with brand, but the most important thing is that you get the right shaft flex, the right grip size, because grip's key if you don't hold the club properly. Um, you need the right shaft flex, the right grip size, the right um, lie angle for you, and we, we do it statically. Yeah. And then we do it dynamically yeah. when you hit the ball. And you can apply that to any of the brands that you want. And then it does become a, a personal choice as to whatever it is. But there's a lot of sort of competition out there, often fueled by you know the guys on the tour yeah. with what they're using or endorsing. So um, I think as long as you get that data in your head, and that's, again, another part of what we're talking about, go to the experts. So if you come down, you'll get a lot out of that on yeah. Monday. Um, because they'll bring all the toys, they bring lots of different shaft options. It's a bit like walking into a, a Formula One car sort of garage where yeah. all the mechanics are working. So it's that sort of level of detail, which well, is what you're all about. It's always been interesting when you've sent, when you've sent me a, a client of yours to sort of have a look at, they normally come with a video and a description and they come with some form of information that A, you've either sort of recorded or told them or what's going on. And it, it takes me no less than sort of having to put people in the five iron approach just to try and work out okay what's going on a with their posture mm. statically mm. Um, but then from the video that you sent me as well it's i mean my obvious knowledge base so to speak is probably going to be biomechanics so yes. in terms of taking a piece of information or a video or a dynamic way of moving breaking that down and trying to critique every element of that that's kind of where how my brain works you know writing books or you know essays that was never my strong point practically that was always kind of my my area of expertise so it's really useful to work with someone who kind of appreciates 
yeah, I'm going to send you to see Ben, but actually Ben might need, need this bit of information. So in terms of looking after the client and looking after the patient, that for me is, is absolutely paramount. But it's, it's everything because, I mean, it's a trust thing because they trust me, I trust you. Yeah. And they trust that if I'm going to put my neck on the line and said, look, I'm really want you to go down the road and see Ben. Yeah. And make sure that you can shift that bit of your body in that way, A, you won't be in pain, but more importantly, you'll play better golf. Yeah, 100%. And you know, you manage that with, with what input you give to them and what treatment you prescribe. And then between the two of us, we advocate sort of like a rehab program. Yeah. So we're lucky enough that we've got the guys at Nuffield Health across the road in the gym. Yeah, you do, yeah. um, so you know, I work closely with them in terms of the fact they've got some, some good trainers over there. Great facilities. And it's good facilities, yeah. yeah. And you know, the, the knowledge now and some of the stuff that you can do with you know, your CX core work, your synergy circuits they do, and as well as your general sort of fitness stuff. Yeah. Because once your body is stronger, as you would know, in the right areas, in the right areas, of course. then you're you can fire the right muscles groups up to hit the ball yeah. more efficiently. But above anything else, you're going to play without pain. Yeah. And you know, you can't play if if you, as a golfer, you know they often say beware the injured golfer because sometimes they play within themselves. Yeah. But if you are playing hurt, it's a problem. And it's just not comfortable. It's not enjoyable. No, you might come back. It's you dangerous. Might have, you might have won the kitty, but at the same it's time, dangerous. it is dangerous. It's dangerous. I mean, you know, when I was working on the tour with um, with Lynn um, years back, I mean, she was chasing a win. And in those days, we didn't have the benefit of you know video sort of FaceTime and all that sort of stuff like yeah. that. So we were reliant on text. And she turned up one time, and she was she was feisty. She was good fun to work with. Um, and when she sort of like got all this off her chest, it turned out, I said, you're injured, aren't you? And she went, yeah. I said, well, why didn't you just tell me that? I yeah. said, what are you doing here hitting balls? I said, because, you know, it was up here, I think it was from memory. I said, you've got to go and yeah. see the physio. Like, you can spot it in Marlow oh, as well. God, and every, I mean, one of the, I remember back at university, one of the best lessons we ever got taught was go and sit in a local coffee shop that looks down the walkway, down the, you know, down Boskin High Street and literally just watch people walking and try and work out what is going wrong with them what's the, what the problem mm -hmm. and it's possibly one of the most useful things you can do just watching someone because you can turn around and you can spot it a mile off now uh, if someone walks even from you know the waiting room chair to my to my <laughs> door I can tell what's going on what's the, what the problem is so it's we work together because I really really enjoy that I, I absolutely think that's so cool in the fact that you are going to talk someone through what treatment you are going to do rather than just, you know your line of business that, you know people are going to just oh my god you know what 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 do I do I'm going to get there I'm going to get clicked about and I said like that I said no you won't I yeah. said he will sit there and he will tell you what he's going to do and he'll tell you why yeah and that just gives you such comfort it's and a such big, I must admit it's a big problem we've got it is education in, 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 in our profession and it's not just in our profession but physiotherapy osteopathy so much of it is, is about being treated by a person and that person obviously has to be trustworthy and has to be you know has, has to understand the patients exactly but the issue we're facing all the time is that there are people out there that aren't doing things in, in as much detail mm -hmm. um, and are just reading through patients yeah. one after the other and it's one of the reasons why you know essentially our treatment sessions are, are a bit longer it's one of the reasons why I, I take a bit more time with clients to try and sit down and explain. But also, one of the biggest aspects is listening. Yeah. I mean, how much how much of it is, comes down to that? I mean, just listen to people talk. It's absolutely massive because, you know, that's what I think you, your journey as a uh, um, as a similar be to mine is the fact that you you never stop learning. The yeah. minute the minute you think you just you've got it all, you might as well pack up. I 100%. mean, I, I love you know doing things, and I now tutor um, the next generation of coaches and that has added such value to what I do on a day to day basis because it it teaches you that the listening skills and the questioning skills just to try and extract that information as to what that person is feeling or, yeah. or would need yeah. and, and that's what you do so so well um, which is why I'm always happy to 
refer people to you because I know they're going to be in the best care, yeah. and, and that's uh, that's the most important thing to me. Because, that's brilliant. And you know, it's it's all about that. I appreciate. It. Well, thanks for coming today. Man. No I pleasure. Really appreciate no, it. Thanks for inviting us along. No, not at all. Yeah. And um, we'll see you guys all soon. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We got any any information on that, Lou? Or you? We have no questions, but Perfect. everyone can ask questions later on, on the video on. later on. Oh, cool. Well. Feel free, yeah. just whiz them across. And uh, make sure that you like, comment, and share this video with anyone you think might be interested in a bit of golf from Martin or a bit of biomechanics from me. And um, we'll see you in a few weeks' time. Thank Cheers. you.